if x1, x2, x3, etc. are in AP and y1, y2, y3, etc. are in GP, then the product x1, y1, x2, y2, x3, y3, etc. will be an AGP. So now we have studied what is an AGP, arithmetic or geometric or progression and how to find a particular term in an AGP. Now, here we are going to do a question regarding the sum of infinite terms of an AGP. So, the main problem students always face is to identify whether the given series is an AGP or not. So, let us look at this series that is 1 plus 4 by 5 plus 7 by 5 square plus 10 by 5 cube up to infinite terms. So, here this is an AGP. Let us look at the numerators here 1, 4, 7, 10. This is an AP. You can see that 1, 4, 7, 10 is in an AP. The denominators 1 means the denominator is 1 itself. So, the denominator is 1. Then we have 1 by 5, here you have 1 by 5, then you have 1 by 5 square, then you have 1 by 5 cube, which means they are in GP. So, you have a series which can be split into two individual series. One is an AP and the other one is a geometric progression. So, how to find the sum of such an I am just writing S is equal to whatever is given in the question 1 plus 4 by 5 plus 7 by 5 square plus 10 by 5 cube up to infinity. I am just writing it down. Now, I am not going to split into an AP and a GP because using a formula for this sum is quite complex. It is a very big formula and memorizing such a formula is hard. So, what I am going to do here is, I am going to convert this AGP into a GP. If possible, let us look. So, what I am going to do here is, first I am going to multiply by the denominator. What is the denominator after the first term? It is 1 by 5. So, I am multiplying the whole sum by 1 by 5. And not only multiplying by 1 by 5, I am also shifting one place. So, what is the first term 1 into 1 by 5? 1 by 5. But I am shifting that and writing here. That is 1 by 5. Plus 4 by 5 into 1 by 5 is 4 by 5 square. Again, I shifted. 7 by 5 square into 1 by 5. That is 7 by 5 cube. So, that also goes till infinity. So, the previous one is the first equation. Now, I am having a second equation. So, now I got an equation by multiplying 1 by 5 to the sum along with a shift. One place I am shifting to the right side. Now, what I am going to do here is subtract these two. And when I subtract these two, on the left side I get s minus 1 by 5 s. And here you have 1 and under 1 there is nothing. So, you are writing 1 here. 4 by 5 and 1 by 5 when you subtract you get 3 by 5. 7 by 5 square and 4 by 5 square you subtract you get 3 by 5 square. 10 by 5 cube and 7 by 5 cube you subtract you get 3 by 5 cube. So, that also goes till infinity. So, now we have multiplied by 1 by 5 and we have subtracted these two and got a series that is 1 plus 3 by 5 plus 3 by 5 cube up to infinity. You can see this is an infinite GP or not? Is this an infinite GP? 1 plus 3 by 5 plus 3 by 5 square plus 3 by 5 cube. It is moving on like that. So, this is an infinite GP, but without 1. You cannot take 1 here because 1 is not inside the GP. So, we have to say 3 by 5, 3 by 5 
plus 3 by 5 square up to 3 by 5 cube is in an infinite GP. Now we know the formula to find out the sum of an infinite GP. We have learned in the earlier sessions. So I am going to apply that also here. So what is S minus 1 by 5 S? S minus 1 by 5 S will give you 4 by 5 S equals 1 is not in GP. So 1 I am writing here plus 3 by 5, 3 by 5 square, 3 by 5 cube that is in GP. In that GP, the first term is 3 by 5. The common ratio is 1 by 5. You can see that it is getting multiplied by 1 by 5. So common ratio is 1 by 5. And now we know the so formula to find out the sum of infinite terms of a GP that is A by 1 minus R. So you get 1 plus 3 by 5 by 1 minus 1 by 5. And that gives you 4 by 5 s is equal to 1 plus 3 by 5 by 4 by 5. So 4 by 5 s is equal to 3 by 5 divided by 4 by 5. Basic loss of fraction, you cancel it and you get 1 plus 3 by 4. And now you get 4 by 5 s is equal to 7 by 4. And now you can get s is equal to 7 by 4 into 5 by 4 that is 35 by 16. So now we are getting the sum of this arithmetic geometrical progression without using any formula. So this is the most easiest way to do this type of question when they are asking you to find out the sum of an AGP. Memorizing formula is quite complex because it's a lengthy formula. So always try to use this method and solve more problems.